What's up, YouTube? It's Mark from Next Level Tech and Android TV Tips, and today we have some Google leaks for you. What can you expect in regards to spec-wise that is almost confirmed for the next Google Chromecast? Uh, we know that it's coming this year. So what else do we know? And we'll dive right into that after this. Make sure you're checking out Android TV Tips for all the latest and greatest when it comes to your news, tips, tricks, and rumors. Uh, make sure that you have your notification bell turned on so you don't miss anything. There's more than 50% of you guys that are watching these videos every single day that are not subscribed. So if that's you, just subscribe. You're watching me anyways. So let's dive into the articles. Uh, we're going to go over to this one first, and it says the Google Chromecast HD allegedly runs on Google TV 12 with 1.5 gigs of RAM and the M-Logic S905 Sorry, the S805 X2, which confuses me a bit, but we'll dive into that, which is their SOC, which is system on chip. Uh, so it says that the Google new Chromecast HD is again in the news. We talked about this last week. If you didn't check out that video, there's a, a link for it down below or in the top right. Uh, the developer on Twitter claims to obtain the new Chromecast HD software build, which reveals many details about the new device. The software build confirms that the name is Chromecast HD, uh, may get changed at the official launch, and it's powered by the Amlogic S805 X2 SoC with support for AV1 decoding and 1.5 gigs of RAM. So the kind of confusing thing is AV1 decoding, everything's switching to, and it's it's mandated by the, the, the OS now, right? Everything needs AV1, right? So it needed to get that, but the S805 X2 chip confuses me, and we'll dive into that in a second, uh, and decoding at 1.5 gigs of RAM, which I guess I kind of understand why they want uh, 1.5 gigs of RAM, and we'll get into that too, but we'll finish up the article here. It says, according to Kuba, uh, discloses the new Chromecast HD will run on Google TV based on Android 12. It's important to tell you that Chromecast with Google TV 4K variant still runs on Android 10. Uh, the new Chromecast HD already passed through FCC and Brazil's Wireless Regulation Authority and Bluetooth SIG. According to the listing on the certification website, Chromecast HD will stream up to 1080p resolution with 60 hertz refresh rate. It's packed with WLAN functions, 802.11ac, and modulations for 802.11an and Bluetooth 5.2. Okay, so um, we're going to look at another article really quickly from Tom's Guide, and then we'll dive into what the specs really mean. So. Uh, we already heard the rumors, uh, so this person released some information. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. So it says, uh, the first is that the code seemingly confirms that Chromecast HD branding and the fact that the device should be running Android 12 with Google TV and appears to have 1.5 gigs of RAM, half a gigabyte less than the 4K, uh, which is likely to prevent the new streamers from upgrading to Android 13, which requires at least two gigs of RAM. These devices usually have a couple years shelf life anyways, so it's what it is. I uh, noticed the upgrade could be possible had the RAM situation been different. Evidently, the new device sports AV updates, which allows updates to bypass storage and to send, instead be streamed directly to partitions. This one's big. So I think a lot of the enthusiasts are geared towards specs because we're coming with an old school mentality and the operating systems are being built in a way to get around expensive hardware. So do we really need 64 gigs of onboard storage if even the update files can be streamed directly to the portions through the cloud and overwritten and updated without really storing themselves on the actual hard drive themselves, almost through like a cache-based system, right? where it takes little bits and pieces and puts it directly where it needs to and overwrites the existing files to do the update properly. Hey, this is next level technology. This is where Google is going with the updates for Android TV. And this is why I've always been excited for Google to really start pushing towards Google TV and really pick it up because these updates are gonna be great for all devices that are gonna be running on Android TV and Google TV in the future, right? Um, so, Diving through the rest of this, it says that the 
Other notes include the fact that firmware diagrams suggest the remote is either similar or identical to the 4K model. Meanwhile, the device is set to run on M-Logic S805 X2 chip, and it's a downgrade from the 4K's S905 X3. And to have an AV1 encoding, something that the 4K model actually lacks. Wireless duties are reportedly handled by um, the Bluetooth 5.2 and the code doesn't reveal anything about potential price tags. We've seen that people are talking about, you know, 40 euros or $40 or $30, somewhere around there, right? Uh, probably the design will be close to the 4K. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that it's almost identical or if not identical to the, the old model. So a couple things just to look at here. Um, here's a quick comparison chart. So this is what the current model is running, which is the S905X3. And here's what the HD model is going to be running, which is the S805X2. So you can see that it is running 64-bit uh, and it has, uh, it's, it's a newer chip, but it's not as fast. So you're looking at 1.9 gigahertz was the previous SOC and the new for the HD is 1.2. Significant decrease in regards to performance. Uh, we're also looking at the, um, the cache memory being the same. Uh, TDP for the power consumption is still the same at 5 watts. And everything else is downgraded in regards to GPU, um, the speed, all the other stuff here. So um, it's running at 1080p, 60 frames per second, all that kind of good stuff, right? Uh, the only difference is it has Bluetooth 5.2. Yeah, so. I don't know why we went so low when we could have went with something like the S905Y. Let me see if I can get a quick comparison of that chip. See, I would have rather them go with the S905Y4 versus the S905Y5. X3, which is what is in the current Chromecast. And here we go. So here we go. So it would have been a little bit faster in regards to the processing. And it would have pretty much had the same specs. And it would have still given you 4K. Maybe that's why they didn't want to go for this S905 Y chip, because it would have still given you the 4K processing. So they went for as cheap as possible and grabbed uh, an older chipset just to give them that access to 1080p in the AV1. So they're going as cheap as possible. So what does that really mean for the device? What does it really mean? It means that it's going to be a basic device to get your streaming done, your basic streaming needs. It's for the people that just want to install a couple apps and get the job done. This isn't going to be something that you're going to want to load up with games or anything like that. This is going to be chugging if you really try to push it too far. Again, with the 1.5 gigs of RAM, yes, you're going to be able to do your simple smart home functions, but anything with that involves picture in picture uh, may not be accessible through a device like this. You would have to go with you know, the 4K. Now, at the same breath, though, this is a $40 device, a $30, $40 device. If we look at the Fire TV lineup, right, the devices like, you know, the Fire Stick Lite, the Fire Stick, uh, regular Fire Stick third generation, those devices have 1.5 gigs of RAM. And yes, you can use the Smart Home Assistant or you can use the Smart Assistant, but you can't do things like picture in picture as well. So it looks like maybe they're mirroring their lineup to match what is already a successful lineup through Amazon, right? They are going to give you the same kind of specs, the same kind of situations. Most likely we probably won't see EC, <laughs> we won't see EC, we won't see CEC functions on this device as well to keep the price as low as possible. But it makes me question which device is gonna be more um, competent, right? I'm kind of leaning Hardware wise, that the Fire Stick Lite and the Fire Stick 3rd Gen is going to be a more competent spec device when it comes to actual specifications. But it seems interesting to see, can Google really optimize the software through Google TV on the Chromecast HD to pick up for maybe some of the lackluster hardware specs? And it looks like they have a couple tricks up their sleeve only real world case situations will really tell us anything, right? 
when they came out with the 4K Fire Stick Max, they told us that it was 40% increased faster speeds than the regular 4K Fire Stick. And from what we saw in, you know, your day-to-day -day actions and your movements, I would say it was closer to a 10%. So, you know, the spec wise we're looking at, it's close to like a 50% reduction in processing power alone, right? So does that mean that the device is gonna be running, you know, 50% slower? I highly doubt it. I would say maybe 20 to 25% slower. But again, we don't know until we actually get these devices in our hand. And currently, the uh, Chromecast 4K is a really fast device. So would the average, not the enthusiast, really notice a reduction when it comes to, um, you know, 15, 20% reduction in performance? Remember, these are people that are going to be buying this device to run it at 1080p. They're not going to be people that are trying to get 4K, 8K, trying to do picture in picture. They need all the CEC functions. These are people that just want a basic device. Do you think they'll really notice that reduction in speed? Do you think they'll really notice if they don't really care about the picture quality going from 1080p to 4K? This is a really basic device, just an entry level to get people into their ecosystem. And who knows? I think it could actually work their way, but it all depends on when we get this device in our actual hands, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, there are a couple other buttons that I just want to remind you that are there. Uh, if you are a member of the YouTube channel as well, there is a button down there. If you're not, it says join. It's another way to support the channel, but there uh, is a members only group for the people that do join that. And we share, you know, upcoming videos. We share articles that we're going to be talking about. Uh, coming in the near future and kind of the updates down the line that are coming to AndroidTV.tips as well as the website and the Telegram group. So if you're looking to support us, that's one of the ways. There's also a button down there um, besides clips that's called tips. So if you do want to support us in any way, you can donate directly through YouTube. There's also PayPal links and uh, cryptocurrency addresses if you do feel like supporting us that way, as well as other affiliate links for other products and services that we also use that you might find valuable as well. Make sure you turn on that notification bell and you hit that like and subscribe because still guys, there's over 50% of you guys that watch these videos every day that are not subscribed. So make sure you do that and do yourself a favor and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Hey everybody, uh, just before we get going, I wanted to say a huge thank you, much love and appreciation to everyone who supports what I do over here on Next Level Tech. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and share these videos with a family member and friend.